Welcome to St. Paul's. Ready your hearts to pray. Together, let us pray. Blessed be the one holy and living God, and blessed be God's holy and life-giving reign. God be with you. Let us pray. Holy God, mighty and immortal, you are beyond our knowing, yet we see your glory in the face of Jesus Christ, whose compassion illumines the world. Transform us into the likeness of Christ who renewed our humanity so that we may share in his divinity. The same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit. Amen. A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not proclaim ourselves. We proclaim Jesus as Lord and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. 
For it, it is the God who said, let light shine out of darkness, who is shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them and his clothes became dazzling white such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice, This is my son, my beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Please join me in prayer. Gracious and loving God, Help us this day to understand and celebrate your dream for the world, to be transformed in Jesus' love, and to use our gifts to make a difference for others. Amen. The glory of God is a human being fully alive. This phrase was coined by St. Irenaeus in the second century. Perhaps Irenaeus had seen people who were so full of God's life that the only word he could think of was glory. Maybe Irenaeus even had moments in his own life, those kind of real peak moments of God's experience when he thought to himself, this is what it feels like to be fully alive. And all he could say was glory. And I wonder if you've had the experience of somebody who's fully alive or a time when you were fully alive as well. Certainly Peter and the disciples who followed Jesus up the mountain on that transformation day 
were baffled by it a little bit. They went to the top of the mountain and they were with Jesus and suddenly he was surrounded by the divine presence, a presence they couldn't even really describe. And they didn't know what to do about all of that. And so continued to be baffled even as they came down the mountain. They didn't know what all that meant, but we, we have a hunch, don't we? We have a hunch because the very first story in the Bible tells us that the first human beings were created in the image of God, male and female. We have a hunch that because in the resurrection, Jesus revealed that God's life overcomes death. We have a hunch because, you know, a hundred days after today, we'll celebrate the Feast of Pentecost. And the Holy Spirit will actually come and infuse people with God's life. And the disciples didn't have that. But all of these remind us that God's divine image is present in us and has been in all humanity from the beginning. And that the gift of the Holy Spirit is just hovering, just waiting to enliven God's people. Of course, Irenaeus would have been aware of people in his own life. People who had failed to see the image of God, either in others or in themselves. People who had lost that liveliness. He might see people like you and I do, people who got up in the morning and had breakfast and went to work and came home from work and watched, t well, maybe he didn't know people that came home and watched TV, but watched TV and then just got up the next day to do it all over again. So he was preaching to people. He was saying, this is what, this is what you could have. Open your hearts and stoles to the divine image in you. Breathe in the spirit of life, he would pray, not just to live, but to be fully alive. There's a reason this story of transformation is always told on this Sunday. First, of course, it's the last Sunday of the Epiphany season, when Jesus, in so many different ways, is revealed as having the divine presence with him. And it's also the Sunday just before Lent. And it's at the beginning of Lent that this story serves as kind of a mission statement for what Lent is supposed to be about. We're given a map for where we're headed. We're headed to the fullness of life. So if you were to imagine a person fully alive, what would you imagine? Modern culture tries to tell us pictures of full aliveness. Maybe it's a person jumping out of a plane with a parachute to have that kind of peak experience. Or maybe it's just the, the idea of a cushy retirement. But in a Christian sense, what would you imagine? Of course, there wouldn't just be one imagining. Fullness of life looks different in your life than it looks in somebody else's life. There are as many expressions of the fullness of life as there are people. N.T. Wright, the theologian, reminds us that actually our whole Christian vocation is to bear the image of God so that every Christian would do that. In our own church, each Sunday we pray that we might be transformed in Jesus' love. So what would it look like in your life to be fully transformed? Or what would it look in your life to, to bear the image of Christ more and more? Can you imagine it? Can you imagine the glory of being fully alive and what that would actually look like? Let me offer three characteristics that are about 
full aliveness, three Christian characteristics to be full of life. And you know them, they're no secret. Faith and hope and love. Faith is that trust that God is working in the world and in us for the sake of life. We do not confuse God with Santa. We do not imagine God up in heaven making a list of who's naughty and who's nice. No, instead, we remember the God who hovers over the waters to bring life out of chaos. We remember the God who breathes life into those first people, so the story goes. But the point is to bring divine life out of this simple clay. We trust that God is at work and it allows us to be free from the anxiety that we somehow have to be in control. We somehow have to make it all right. Which leads us to the second practice of full aliveness, which is hope. Hope. Hope is that uh, faith, right, that God is working. To be fully alive in hope is to know that God is working to bring everything to their fullness. Like Julian of Norwich, who said, all shall be well, and all shall be well, and all manner of things shall be well. Or as somebody more put it in a more modern sense, you know, everything will turn out all right in the end. And if it's not all right, it's not the end. For the Christian, this just recognizes that the very nature of our God is to bring life out of things that seem or are dead. The third practice is love. Love, of course. Love is about that kind of freedom that comes with giving one's self away. Love sets in motion a kind of mutual sharing that enlivens both the giver and the receiver. Love recognizes that human beings are all have that chance to be fully alive and that God's ultimate glory comes when all human beings together, in the end, are fully alive. And so that's where we're headed as we move toward Lent and toward Easter and toward Pentecost and the giving of the Spirit. It's all about human beings and humanity being fully alive, you and me fully alive. So between now and Ash Wednesday, I would invite that to be our meditation about the glory of God and about what that promise of being fully alive would look like for you and for me and for our world. Because even though it's not the end, even though everything is not all right right now, we can still move with God to that full aliveness as we move forward in love.
Let us pray to God, who is made manifest in Jesus Christ. As the prophet Isaiah rang out, Arise, shine, for your light has come. Empower your church, O God, to ring out the good news of the light of your Son, Jesus, which pierces even the deepest darkness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As a star rose high into the nighttime sky to draw the nations to the Christ child, send your blessing, O God, on this nation and every nation, and draw the whole world to your peace and truth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As John the Baptist guided throngs of people to the edge of the wilderness and baptized Jesus in the River Jordan, we pray that you would guide our country and our leaders to the ways of justice and righteousness. Especially we pray for our new President Joseph and Vice President Kamala. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As Jesus climbed to the mountaintop and proclaimed blessings on the people of the world, we pray for the sick and the distressed the poor and the lame. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray especially for Joan Verlingo, Linda McLaughlin, Diane Miller, the Forrest family, Michelle Sloat, Susan Lawson, Dylan Toma, Feely Young, Bonofshe, Laura Cope, Charles Vaughn, John and Arlene Borgeson, Nate Price, Alan Mulliken, Michelle Blair, Nan Kusulos, Tom Bryce, Byrne and Renee Kim, Wally Clavisaw, Jim Prescott, and the Murdoch family, especially Charlotte. As Jesus called his disciples to leave their nets and boats and follow him, we pray for those we love who have died and who have answered your call to follow Jesus to your heavenly kingdom. Give them your peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, light of the world, hear our prayers and make us reflections of your light, that the places of darkness in our world would be pierced by your light and that all nations would be drawn to you and be overwhelmed with joy. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
And now, may you awaken this week to the life of God that is within you and all God's people and the blessing of God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer be with you and hold you always. Amen. Alleluia. Go in peace to spread the good news. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.